Hello, welcome to the Kennedy Space Center. This is the SSPF High Bay. We're here to talk to you about a very important milestone in the uh, lifespan of the International Space Station. And with me, I've got Center Director Bob Cabana and the Director of uh, the Exploration Research and Technology Programs uh, Organization, Josie Burnett. And the first thing I'd like to really talk to you two about is what it took to build and what it's taking us to maintain an international orbiting laboratory in space. Wow, you know, uh, I can remember I, I think, first off, to put it in perspective, it was the KSC team that put the ISS on orbit. And I remember every module coming through this high bay, and Josie, you were a part of it. And at one point, we had so much hardware in here, we couldn't even fit it all. We had to move stuff into the uh, high bay in the ONC building. They had um, solar arrays and truss structure in there because they wouldn't all fit in here. And what an amazing job the team did, you know, processing all that hardware and getting it into space. What, what are your thoughts on that, seeing it all come through here? Boy, um, it was just a, an amazing time, amazing time in my career. Um, the way I like to look back on it and think about it, um, it be, you know, assembling the space station, the International Space Station was, is the most, the greatest human achievement as it relates to like a construction site. If you think of it like a construction, think about the pyramids. Um, people created the pyramids many, many years ago. That was a huge accomplishment for the technology that they had at the time. Um, for ISS, it was um, the pyramids on steroids. We were assembling um, a, a piece of a, a living quarters in microgravity in low Earth orbit. And the last place all of the US elements saw on Earth was this building. The very last place um, that, that that hardware um, was on the ground available for everyone to see other than the crew that has seen it was here in the SSPF, and what an amazing time. And, and not just the U.S. elements. I mean, everything but the Russian elements. Uh, Kibo, the Japanese laboratory, Columbus, the uh, European laboratory, Node 2 that was built by Elena in Italy, uh, the MPLMs, which we have one here, uh, Leonardo, Raffaello, and Donatello. All that hardware flowed through here before it went to space. Absolutely, and each, each um, element that came through, each international partner element that came through, it was really kind of cool. We gave them a little piece of space Right, a little spot here in the SSPF High Bay, and it became their sovereign territory. They used whatever processes they wanted to use, and I, I do remember um, coming down here and, and just taking a look at all the different, um, you know, the hardware and the people and the teams and, and um, looking at the toolboxes and just saying, wow, is that how you spell wrench in Japanese, right? It was just a really, um, it was a hopping place. Speaking of uh, the construction of the ISS, right, talking about the story of, I believe, STS-88, is that correct? Uh, you've got a lights on story, a light switch story. Well, the first thing we did was Nancy Curry was my arm operator and uh, she grabbed Unity and lifted it out of the payload bay and she had about an inch or less of clearance on either side and I did not know you could move the arm that slow but uh, it was like watching grass grow but she was very, very precise. You know, we got it out of the payload bay, attached it to the orbiter docking station and that set us up for the rendezvous with uh, Zarya. And so we went through our whole rendezvous profile, flew it down into the payload bay. Eventually we uh, grabbed Zarya, lifted it up and attached it to the other end of the uh, node to PMA2. And at that point we had a space station. When it came time to actually open the hatch to go in, um, Jerry Ross was going through all the procedures and I was up there with him. And I said, Sergey, come up here. And I grabbed Sergey Krikalov, who was uh, our Russian crewmate. And if you watch any video or pictures of us ingressing into the space station, every hatch that we went through, Sergey and I went through side by side because it was an international space station and I felt it really important that we enter as an international crew. But I, I will never, never forget, uh, forget that. It was, it was really special. Uh, what, what else is your team looking for over the next couple of years? Um, you know, ISS is going to be extended through 2024. You're going to be busy for some time. What are you looking at? The team that we have here at KSC, we are continuing to resupply station. We're flying um, spares, um, not just spares, you know, essentials, nitrogen, oxygen, um, uh, eventually resupplying the cooling system. So we're doing a lot of, of um, continuous um, uh, sustainment of the station. We're leading the agency um, when it comes to plant research. We're um, using space station as a microbial observatory. What is the space station doing currently to get us to Mars? And I'd really kind of just like to hear what you have to say you about know, that. And, you know, it is a stepping stone to exploration beyond planet Earth. Uh, as fantastic a scientific laboratory as it is, uh, to me, one of the great purposes of the International Space Station is serving as an engineering testbed to prove those systems that we need 
for a long duration space flight to Mars or anywhere beyond planet Earth. You know, right now with current propulsion technology, you're talking a year and a half to two years to go to Mars and back. You know, I think it's really neat that uh, Scott Kelly's up there right now on his one year mission, critical to our exploration uh, beyond planet Earth. And, you know, the ultimate goal, of course, is boots on Mars. But uh, we got a lot that we need to learn in order to be able to do that. And I, I believe the capability-based architecture that we are developing with SLS, with Orion, eventually leading to a HAV module, eventually leading to a lander, you know, it, it is the right architecture to allow us to explore beyond our home planet.